I'd like to talk to you today about uh, an exciting new development in custom-made craniofacial implants. One of the issues that we've had for many years as craniofacial surgeons is how to reconstruct the bones of the head and the face in as anatomically accurate way as possible. So this is often a problem for us in situations where people have uh, craniofacial anomalies where they're born with bones that haven't grown to the right shape or size, where they've been involved in accidents and have lost pieces of bone or they've been severely injured, or where they have perhaps been removed because they've had to have treatment for a tumour. In the past we've had to rely on the patient's own bone and often there is not enough of it to uh, harvest to make a good reconstruction and it's often not possible to make it the right shape either. So these types of reconstructions are often severely compromised because of those facts. Over recent years though, the advent in three-dimensional technology has given us a great opportunity. So over the last 10 years in particular, CT scanning that gives us detailed information about the three-dimensional shape of bone has improved very considerably. And alongside that, over the last few years, we've seen some very effective 3D printers come on the market. So this allows us to print things in three-dimensional shapes based on information gained from the patient. So we can make patient-specific three-dimensional implants. Now, we've been involved with the design of these implants for several years now and are very much at the forefront of making the best possible implants for reconstructions. The process itself involves taking a 3D scan of a patient and then, uh, in computer graphical terms, making a 3D reconstruction of the uh, piece of bone that we want to replace. And then this can either be milled or printed out uh, uh, in various materials. And nowadays we use plastic materials that are very inert, so they last forever, but they're not replaced by natural bone. And I thought I'd show you this example here of somebody, this is a printout of somebody who has an abnormal shape in their skull here. So you can see here, this is the forehead, this is the top of the eye socket and the nose, and that there is a dent here that needs to be reconstructed. Well, using these three techniques, 3D techniques, we can print out a patient-specific implant that will fit into that gap there and restore the uh, shape of the bone to its normal shape. So the great advantage of this is that we know it's going to be exactly the right shape, so we get a perfect bony reconstruction. And we can also insert it through very minimal access techniques, uh, which means that the operation is shorter, simpler, less chances of having problems. Uh, and it also means that we don't have to harvest bone from other parts of the body, such as other parts of the skull or leg. So it's a very exciting new technique that is really revolutionising some of our reconstructive techniques. I think at the moment this is the state of the art, but uh, over coming years, with uh, advances in biotechnology, I think it won't be long before we will be able to make implants like this that we will then insert and because of the way that they're made, the patient's own bone will grow into the implant as it dissolves away so that natural bone is uh, replaced there. And it's something that we're very excited about. We're using it a lot for children who have uh, craniofacial anomalies due to congenital problems in reconstructing after road accidents and gunshot injuries and in treating children who have uh, suffered the effects of tumours in the face. So um, I think it's very much a matter of watch this space. I think we're going to see much more of this personalised uh, surgical uh, medicine uh, uh, coming forward. And I'm very proud that we are making a big contribution to that.